Monday, where I am long on thoughts, but short on time. So, open secret, I am a huge horror fan. Traditionally, yes, the genre has been dismissed, looked down upon, and even seen as a gateway to social moral erosion. Yeah, that probably deserves a longer treatise at a different time, which I'll address just quickly in a second. But for now, for me, aside from horror just being an easy target on the surface, the simple to understand tropes give the audience a fast pass, if you will, to the middle of the story, giving the artist time to critique the form, us, society, and everything in between. The story can be the focus. And to that earlier point, some have even argued that the genre of horror films can even function as timely versions of the medieval morality play, art critiquing society in plain sight or with a hockey mask. In addition, it can be a great place for creatives and producers to get their feet wet before becoming Hollywood heavyweights. Renee Zellweger, Johnny Depp, Kevin Bacon, Kristen Stewart, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Michael Emerson, Hilary Swank, not to mention everyone behind the camera. Also, what I love about horror, given the current trends, it is one of the few places today where independent films can have huge success. But admittedly, because of its low bar entry, the quality control is almost non-existent. They could be decade-defining like Scream, philosophical studies like Peeping Tom, awful torture porn like Hostel or exploitive garbage like House of Wax the remake, or sublime societal critique like Get Out, or even punk rock throwback good times like the awesome newcomer The Ranger. Check it out. So for me, this is the fun. This is the real crapshoot. We've no idea. And with the film Hereditary, we've definitely no idea. Without spoiling any plot points, I'll just jump right in. This is my initial takeaway. And for this, I'm just going to slow it down ever so slightly. When our feelings of helplessness are left alone to mingle with our guilt and grief, reinforced by real-world tragedy, without outside help, we can continue to spiral down into deeper guilt and grief until we reach incommunicable solitude. From this deep, dark hole of abandonment, we spend so much time on ourselves for survival, it's easy to think that this now wounded self is either all there is or at least now the center of all there is. It is literally a fallen identity, but one of hard lines, so it seems more real, almost comforting. As a result, we maim, scar, and possibly even kill anything or anyone who threatens this identity. We want this solitude because in the dark, we hear whispers that this new hope of sorts is the sole road to getting what we think we want, though we are now unable to see that the very thing bringing us pain is that to which we now run for comfort. Wonder why they always seem to run up the stairs? Also, for more on this in particular, check out my introductory talk on hope and how the power of hope lies not in our amount of it, but in the object of it. And in that lies the ability to either save us or kill us. Now, back to the film. If, when, all this is passed down for generations, the question is, do we have a choice? Or are we unwitting victims with no choice but to destroy the ones trying to save us or the ones coming after us? I and the film argue the former, but still, also, for these sinking swimmers, any potential help from, say, a lifeguard may not even attempt to come close because of the potential for the lashing out to drown both the swimmer and the guard. Now, that's the tragedy, especially when you consider that on any given day, we are either the swimmer or the guard. Do we let go and give over to the help? Or do we, on the other side, allow ourselves to get close enough that we may drown, which is the only distance at which a true saving can happen, willing to die to save? I was thoroughly impressed with Ari Aster's feature-length debut. About the same age as Spielberg when Jaws was released, I mention this for provocative reasons, but most acutely because both had established actors and demanded a ton from them. This was family drama amped up and stretched out to its breaking point. Tony Collette, Sixth Sense, was insane, unbridled insanity, and it worked. The pacing was brave, as if the director knew that the ending would pay off, and it almost does, epically. It didn't quite get there for me, but I don't care. I was along for the ride, due much in part to the spot-on performances and the purposeful on-the-nose cinematography by Powell Pogorzelski. Visually, the dissolves and match-cut simplicity were effective in emotional isolation, conjuring thoughts of The Shining with controlled story reveals that evoked the subgenre of the days of The Omen and Rosemary's Baby. The voyeur opening shots approach to the miniatures in the real house were not only stunning old-school tracking shots, but kept me at an uncomfortable distance 
existence, like The Haunting, the original, please, while seamlessly moving me from room to room. No matter where you land on this film, either it's brilliant or it's flawed, it's obviously done by artists who understand and love the medium. This is smartly crafted to a T, from floor to frame. I can't say this film frightened me or scared me, but it did freak me out, creep me out, and gave me a ton to think about. Undeniably disturbing. But that's it for me. I really, really want to talk about the end. And you know what? Maybe I'll come back and talk about that at another time, exploring the revelations of how when our heart's desires are pulled along by fear, we don't just see the ends of our actions as justifying the means. We see ourselves as the only one who can fix the ends, bringing them to fruition, resulting in making us the center of a story that wasn't even ours to begin with. And that's the tragedy we all inherit. Wow, that was a downer. Um, here are some puppies being cute. As I like to say, this is just the beginning of longer and larger conversations. Being able to delve into the stories that have gone before, enjoying them, seeing how they have become part of pop culture, and then armed with understanding how they change us and our culture, having the ability to change them for the healing and the good. So please, give me a like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe. And that's my Monday, now back to yours. Do you really want to hurt?